Hello, my friends and comrades and pioneers, and welcome to the everlasting summer. So, let's go to Alga, I suppose. Or maybe think a little bit more, I have no idea, let's see. A lazy evening, there's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. I headed towards Alga's cabin. The light in the house was on. Hello, Semyon. You're quite late. <laughs> yeah, I went for a walk to look around the camp. All right, you will be sleeping here. What? She pointed her fingers at one of the beds. <laughs> right here. I was a bit surprised. Yeah, something wrong. We are out of free cabins anyway. The camp leader smiled, but I rather think it was just out of politeness. You do want to be a decent pioneer, don't you? There was a clear emphasis on the word decent. Yep. Sure. I was lost in thought for a moment. Uh, don't you mind it, mademoiselle? <laughs> she looked at me oddly, with surprise and some offense in her eyes. A pioneer should respect their elders, Olga said strictly. Of course he should, no one argues with that. I blethered, not realizing what was wrong. Shouldn't you also... She stared at me. Under such a gaze, even Mithril fucked by the best dwarf's master. What? What? Under such a gaze, even Mithril forged by the best dwarf masters from the... Oh! Lord of the Rings! Okay, never... Stupid. Stupid me. I don't get the nerd reference. Huh. Should I what? What's up, toots? Eh, what? Annoyance and a lack of understanding made me raise my voice. You must address adults appropriately. Yes, of course, there are a lot of strange things here. This girl is just a couple of years older than me, or maybe even younger. But as I decided not to argue, or well, just a few minutes ago I would never have called her an adult, I have to admit that she was also given a strong character. And in any case, I wasn't in a position to argue. As you say, ma'am, I mumbled. That's much better. This is how a decent pioneer should conduct himself. And now it's time to sleep. Honestly speaking, I was going to become neither a decent nor an indecent pioneer. Just yesterday I wasn't going to become a pioneer at all. But do I have a choice now? Probably not. If you don't want to, we'll have to make you. This is the motto Olga was probably going to use. You know, there's a song, a famous song in Germany. In German, for the, for the Communist Party in East Germany. It's, uh, its lyrics are, the party, the party is always right. So, Semyon, deal with it, I suppose. <laughs> I climbed onto the bed and closed my eyes, only to realize how tired I was after today. Something hammered in my head awfully, as if my brands had started at ni a night shift. And they seemed to be aimed more at rolling steel than working on something more sensitive. Question, so do I sleep in the same room with the boss, with Olga? Or did I just get that wrong? <laughs> The bus flew through my mind. And the square with the monument. The canteen full of pioneers. And the malicious face of Ulyana. Slavia. Lena. And even recalling Alisa didn't give me too much of a negative feeling. Well, me personally, I get a lot of negative feelings if I see that bitch. What if I'm here for good? What if I'm here for good? Ah, I get it. My bad, my bad. Day two, and there are probably seven since he said uh, he can go in a week back to town. Oh, so so it's definitely like in the end of the week I decide, do I go back to town or do I stay here? Mm. I hate such decisions, but we'll see. Maybe I'm just, I'm just taking away the stuff from the ending. <laughs> I was having a dream. It seems like it was, I was in some kind of vacuum with nothing but with nothing but nothing around me. But not only around. I was the only creature in the universe. As if the universe had returned to a state of singularity right before the Big Bang. And something was just about to happen. Suddenly I heard a voice. I could not make out the words, but it sounded familiar. The voice was whispering something gently, as if soothing me. And then I realized it was the voice of that strange girl from the bus. The girl from the dream. But what is she trying to tell me? Who is she? 
maybe depending on the girl I get together in the end, it's the girl I get together who is the girl in my dream. I don't know. Just me speculating. I woke up. Bright sunlight struck my eyes. It was almost noon, wow. After stretching lazily on the bed and yawning, I started to recall the previous day. In few seconds, all its events passed before my eyes. The bus, the camp, the local inhabitants. No, that's just wrong. Not this whole situation, not me being here. It was wrong by default. My attitude toward what was happening was wrong. Because yesterday I fell asleep here just like that, and before that I chatted nicely with the local peonies. Even managed to crack a few jokes. How could I act like that in such a situation? I should be frightened, startled by everything rustling. By every little rustling. I should avoid all contact with the potentially hostile creatures. The last day's events were getting hazy, like I had a hangover. This really feels like the morning after, ha after a heavy drinking party. Yesterday's natural, flawless, absolutely normal conduct becomes a nightmare in the morning. A con grotesque illustration from the Divine Comedy. What is the Divine Comedy? I don't know that. Yes, it's just like that, and I can't change the past now. Then again, I probably assessed the situation and was acting accordingly. I glanced around, trying to figure out whether I had been thrown somewhere else, but Olga's, ca Olga's, Olga's cabin looked the same as yesterday. Everything seemed to be in its place, except for a pioneer uniform which was hanging from the bed hat. I fumbled with it in distrust and tried it on. At least this is better than walking around in winter clothes. Wish I could see myself. Better look like a clown. And for that, I needed a mirror. At least a tiny one. I finally found one on the wardrobe door. Holy! I looked at the newfound peony and jumped away in surprise. There was some teenager on the other side of the mirror. Ah, I guessed so. I knew he was younger, but, well, at least I suppose he was younger. He resembled me, but he wasn't me. Where did the weak stubble go? Where were the... Where were the backs under my eyes, the slouch, the deathly fatigue on my face? It seemed that I had not been thrown back in time or into a parallel reality, but instead had simply changed bodies with someone else. Right, that's real simple. Such things happen every day. <laughs> I took a closer look at the stranger, and only then I realized that it was actually me. It just wasn't today's me. Maybe the one from between my school and university years. Well. At least that is something. There you go. The person in an extreme situation that failed to notice the elephant in the room after all. But the camp leader notices it, and last night she told me off for addressing her without proper respect. Ah, screw that. Well, man, you didn't know. How would you know? I doubt my appearance affects anything else. If the clock was not lying, breakfast was long over. Strange that the boss didn't wake him up. Oh well, I'll try to find something in the canteen. It worked out well yesterday with Slavia, didn't it? Those memories made me smile involuntarily. The sun was shining brightly outside. A light breeze was blowing. A beautiful summer day. I had not felt so good in the morning for several years. Our problems were gone, vanished into clouds that were white as snow. Olga came out of nowhere. Good morning, Semyon. Morning. I smiled, doing my best to show that, no matter what, my morning was indeed good. You only arrived yesterday, so I decided not to wake you up, but breakfast? Never mind, here, take this. She handed me something wrapped in paper. Judging by the oily stains, there had to be sandwiches inside. Oh, thank you. Now go wash yourself. I was about to leave. Wait a second. Olga... Olga quickly ran into the house and came out to shove a small bag into my hands. Inside it, I found a toothbrush, soap, a small towel and something else. It, I did not look too closely. A pioneer should always be clean and tidy. Let me do your neckerchief properly the f this first time. Yours is a screw. You should do it yourself once you learn how to. Uh, do we have to? I'm going to wash myself now. <laughs> yeah, right. It could, it could get hooked on the tap and strangle me. Fine. Later then. And don't forget about the lineup. Pencils, paper, drawing lines. You don't forget such things. What lineup? What do you mean, what lineup? She frowned. It's Monday today. 
Weird. By my approximation, it should have been Sunday. Then again, a shift in the day of this week is hardly the worst thing. True that. Usually we have line-ups in the early in the morning before breakfast. But it's Monday today, so we are having it at 12 o'clock. Don't be late. Uh, alright, but where? At the square, where else? There was no reason to argue. I headed to the bathing place. I knew I could forget about separate showers and toilets. But the sight of this malfunctioning symptom of decaying, decaying socialism. A funny turtle with a tin shell, paw tops and a ceramic belly. I felt sick. I was not a squeamish person, but nevertheless, standing there I realized that there was still some minimal level of habitual comfort, which I found it troublesome to do without. True that, I personally... That looks really a bit strange. But I mean... You don't have that many options, Simeon, do you? As often like that, when you lose things that you thought were ordinary and common, you suddenly understand just how essential they were. Uh, screw this, as if I have any choice. The water was ice cold. While washing my hands was not an issue, washing my face and my mouth became a big problem. There was no toothpaste in the paste in the back which Olga demit um, my bad, Olga gave me. I always forget that. I could brush my teeth without it, but there was a small round box around, wrapped around in the towel. Tooth powder. Cute. One point for me being somewhere in the past. I washed myself quite quickly, also due to the ice cold water. Someone was coming quickly, or more like running towards me. I turned around. Oh, it's you, and you look... Like you are about to do sports or something? Huh. It was Slavia, dressed in a tracksuit. The girl would probably look good in anything. Pioneer uniform, bikini, probably even a spacesuit. Well, you know, it's just being me, but I'm just happy that this person is very nice to me so far. And this motherfucker just... No, oh, well. I mean, she looks good. No question. And she has ridic ridiculous boobs. No question. Still, that he always thinks first about this is kinda uncool. Hey there. Oh, I, I mean, what's a good morning? Yeah. Why did he try to say Ohio? <laughs> oh yeah, real smooth. Why didn't you come for breakfast? I overslept. I said it as, as if I was proud about it. Oh, I overslept. <laughs> but Olga gave me some sandwiches. Oh great, then don't forget about the lineup. You didn't give her the keys. Yeah, sure. As if I could forget. Right, I gotta run. Enjoy yourself. She waved goodbye to me and disappeared around the path spent. Looks like it's a couple of minutes until the lineup. I should quickly pass by my home to drop off my washing bag and eat the sandwiches and then head to the square. I swung open the door of the camp's leader cabin and rushed inside, as if jumping into the last car of, the of a departing train. It didn't turn out to be the best idea, because inside I found Olga, of course, she's changing. Who was changing? I froze on this box, trying not to breathe. Finally, the game player noticed me. Samyon! I looked away immediately. Have you heard of knocking? Now get out! Yeah, that was real clumsy. Although I did enjoy the sight. Olga followed me out in a minute. Here, take this. Now it's your home too. You should still knock, though. She handed me a key. I put it in my pocket. Home. But uh, just one thing. I swear, even though I'm not Russian, I swear, if this was really a thing, like boys and girls sleeping in one cabin, I, w <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was born in the wrong time and the wrong place. <laughs> of course, if you disregard how fantastical the current events are, this camp was far from being the worst place on earth, but to call it home... Just after one day spent here, I doubt I'll ever be able to do so. Ah, stop bitching, you dumb idiot. Alright, let's go. We are late. Uh, but what about the sandwiches? Just eat them on the way. We were passing along the lines of the pioneers' cabins while I was tucking into the ham sandwiches, and Olga kept on talking and talking. She was buzzing like a game of operation with Parkinson's. But I cared about nothing but the food. Understood? Huh? You weren't listening. Sorry. Today is the first day of your new life as a pioneer. 
And you should do your best so that it becomes a happy life. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm serious. A pioneer has many duties. Great responsibility is conferred upon him. To participate in social work, to help his juniors, to study and study and study again. We here are all like one big family. And you will become a part of it. Yeah, a part. I'd even sign a party membership card if I could save if it could save me from listening to this nonsense. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I hope that after your term here is I hope that after your term here is over, you'll keep the most pleasant memories about our camp. Memories that will last your whole life. And when will this term end? Why do you keep asking silly things? It seems I won't get any information from her. A shame, really. This world appears, appears to be so friendly, but it never bothered to introduce itself to me. Perhaps now I can take things somewhat easier than yesterday. It seems like I haven't have some unspoken ceasefire with it. It isn't trying to hurt me, but I'm forbidden from asking questions. Seems that way, really. Kinda strange. Of course, the situation isn't a pleasant one, but what can I do about it? A bad peace is better than a good dispute. Wow. I like this guy. I really... Our protagonist is cool. Our protagonist is cool. That's always important. A stupid protagonist, like Achan, I'm looking at you from the way we all go. A stupid protagonist is stupid. Wow. I'm... I'm my, th my thoughts are not as deep as Semyon's, though, I have to say. He's much more intelligent than me. The most important thing for you now is to make the best of the time you will spend here. I'll do my best. Honestly, I was very tired of this conversation. It would be good to know where that here is. But... We came to the square. The pioneers were already lined up. What? Is somebody not here yet? Hmm. Nope. All here. I, cha I think I changed her voice a bit, but you know. I'm... I can only do the little girl girl's vice constantly anyway, so bear with me with changing the voices and stuff like that. She looked around at the brave pioneer troops. Alright, go stand somewhere. Weird. Why did she tell me there are no more sleeping places? Why did she tell me there are no more sleeping places? What? Huh? Okay, I don't get it, but okay. While the chief was running her mouth about our plans for the week, I stared at the people. Oh, there's one girl I didn't met yet. The one with the hair and top of her head, you know. A few heads away from me stood Electronic, a little further, Lena and Slavia, and at the end of the line, Ulyana and Elisa. Everyone I had met was there. Olga spoke about some competitions, and I turned attention to the monument. Gender? could not, not remember any revolutionary with a similar name. Me neither. He had a weird posture too, as he was looking around with distrust, maybe contempt, or even disdain. Probably some local leader. Maybe. Daydreaming again? Slavia brought me back to reality. Olga stood nearby. Still remember the plan for the week? The plan? I will never forget the plan. <laughs> I applaud your sense of humor, Semyon. That was the perfect communist answer. <laughs> perfect. She looked at Slavia. Did you bring it? Yes. Slavia handed me a piece of paper. It's a checklist. Here are four tasks to check off. Do it all today. Before you start, sign up for a club. There are some clubs in the clubhouse and a musical club in a separate building. Then visit the infirmary. And finally, visit the library. Got it? Okay, yes, I hope I got it. I hope I don't have to remember that really with my brain. The checklist seemed like a good chance to find out something, since I had to go to places I haven't been before. Then come on, start right now. What about lunch? Don't worry, I'll bring you more sandwiches. The checklist is, is more important. Good luck. They departed too fast for me to ask anything else. Missed breakfast, now I'll miss lunch too. This ain't good. Maybe I'll manage it in time somehow. Lunch starts at 1pm. Then again, if I'll go there, I might miss a place from the checklist. Okay, it's too early to go to the canteen anyway. Oh, I can choose! Cool. Cool. 
Well, hmm, I have to go to the music club, to the library, and for other places. Uh, and since it's like that, I suppose the order is not really important in which I go. No, I suppose it's not important, so let's go first to the library. Actually, I love reading, but spending my days in a library under the current circumstances was well beyond my scope. Hey, why not? I mean, I'm pretty sure at this point you have no chance in hell anyway. <laughs> you lost to the devil anyway, Semyon. He will keep your soul in this dimension. So I'd better hurry up with this checkpoint. As I stepped inside, a memory from my childhood emerged in my head. It was very vivid. I'm seven or eight years old. I'm at the library with my mother. While she's looking through the books I might need for my studies, I'm sitting in the corner and looking through their collection of comic books. Well, at least Lenin is here. And probably some other communists. There again, Lenin in the upper, Lenin in the upper right corner. On the left corner... Oh, I know this face, but I don't know who, is, uh, who it is. And I can't really see any other faces, can I? No, I can't. Okay. Back then, I didn't know why they had so many. Or oh, why couldn't I take some with me? The notion of collective property was something my mind hadn't grasped yet at that age. However, back then, the whole concept of property was pretty hazy to me. This memory seemed even stranger now, while I was standing in this particular camp they might have managed to build communism in three years. Soviet symbolism was all over the place, and the shams, excuse me, and the shelves were full of related literature. Of course, I wasn't planning to read any of these. Getting acquainted with a full collection of books by Marx was the last thing on earth I would think of. Hey, I read some of Marx's uh, writings. It's actually pretty interesting. Where's the librarian? I didn't spend much time looking for her. Oh, so you're the librarian. Ha! Huh. I look closely. Short hair, thick glasses, rather cute face. She was snoring so peacefully, I couldn't just wake her up. I can wait. If she doesn't wake up in a half hour, then maybe then. I couldn't just sit there, so I took a random book from the nearest bookshelf. Arthur Schopenhauer. The World as Will and Representation. Wow. I read that in the original, therefore in German, not the whole book, just uh, a few excerpts of it, uh, just a few parts of it, but uh, that's some heavy stuff. <laughs> I opened it roughly in the middle and started reading. Oh Jesus, that's already difficult in German, why in English now? The life of a man with this endless upkeep, wants and suffering is to be regarded as the explanation and paraphrase of the procreative act, e. e E I E, in exemplum probably, the absolute claim of the will to live, and furthermore. So, for example, E I E is for example, okay, and furthermore, it is also the reason the man owes nature his death and thinks with anxiety of this death. Is this not the evidence that our existence involves guilt? At any rate, we always exist from time to time, paying with death for our birth. We always exist and alternatively bear all the joy and sorrow of life, since neither of both can pass us without some effect that is the result of our star stated will to live. Thus the fear of death, which in spite of all the miseries of life holds us firmly to it, is really elusive, but just as elusive is the impulse which has abstract attracted us into it. This attraction itself may be seen objectively as the mutual longing glances of two lovers. They are the purest expression of the will to live in its, as it, in its affirmation, how gentle and tender it is. Ah, oh, Jesus. It wants happiness and quiet pleasure, quiet pleasure, and mild joys for itself, for others, for all. Ah, oh, Jesus. I don't think I really got all of that. <laughs> English, very complicated language. Someone knocked on the door. I closed, closed the book and quickly... Now I'm totally confused. <laughs> I closed the book quickly and put it back in its place. What a nice habit, knocking on the door. I should pick it up, probably. It was Lena. Oh, hi. I smiled. Hi, uh, I just wanted to return a book. 
She had the copy of Gone in the, with the Wind that I saw yesterday. Oh, Xenia is sleeping. I'll come back later. Oh, she's awake. Uh, really, I don't have any voices for you, so I'm just talking. <laughs> I'm awake. I turned around in surprise to look at her. She eyed me closely from behind her table. What is it you wanted? Uh, I need you to check here. Give it here. She quickly signed the paper and gave it back to me. She had this look on her face that made me want to keep quiet. Lena came up to her to return a book. I thanked Xenia and went out. Okay. So much about that. Mm, what next? Infirmary? Maybe? Mm, music club. I'm not really into music, to be honest. Not that much, at least, personally. Let's go to the clubhouses. I went to the clubhouses. To tell the truth, I never really liked ex extracurricular activities. At school, I used to find any excuse to skip extra classes. At university, I had no interest in participating in the student council. I wasn't interested in boxing, aero modeling, or sewing. So I came here just to check off the box. Nobody was there. I found myself in something like a hut of a junior robot enthusiasts. <laughs> there were wires and simple printed circuits scattered everywhere. Chips and on the chips and on the table proudly stood an oscillograph. Really, wow, old school. I heard voices from another room, and then two pioneers appeared. Oh, it's electronic and a friend. Electricity? I don't know. <laughs> one was electronic, the other one I didn't know. Hi, Samian. Oh, well, I don't really remember the voice anymore. Hey, Samian, we've been expecting you. It seems he knows everything about everyone. Why were you expecting me? Well, of course, because you came up to sign our, up our cybernetics club, didn't you? He didn't let me answer. And this is Shurik. He's in charge here. I assume there's only the two of you in this club. Well, you can say that it's, it is three now. Shurik came up to me and assertively offered his hand. His face was somewhat familiar. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. I'll give him a deep voice. I mean, yeah, I'll give him a deep voice. Welcome to the club. Yep. Now I'll show you around. Make yourself at home. Uh, guys, I just wanted to... We're always welcoming new members. He said it in such a way that that, that the anthem of the Soviet, Soviet Union suddenly started playing in my head. <laughs> It's amazing. I even remembered the words. In the first grade, I had a textbook with the lyrics in the back. Oh no, I just wanted you to sign my checklist. Yep, you sign up to the club, we'll sign your checklist. He grinned. I was getting ready for a long and boring argument, but then I heard someone enter. I looked back and saw Slavia. Ah, Simeon. I hope they're not giving you any trouble. She narrowed her eyes, looking at the future of the Motherland's robotic industry. <laughs> I know these two. They can. Oh, you know, actually, I just need to get my checklist signed. I decided to take advantage of the situation. No problem. Give it to me. Slavia took the paper and marched up to Shurik. Sign it. Hold on, we're not done yet. You're done. Sign it now. She gave Shurik such a threatening look that it made him lose every possible objection. He wrote some squiggles on the checklist. I thanked Slavia. Then I moved on in a mellow mood. Hmm. So it's too late for eating now, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, I can't go to the kitchen dining hall anymore. So let's go to the infirmary then. Of course, why not? <laughs> Haven't saved in a while though. Should have saved. Well. Actually, we're already nearly on the 30-minute mark, so why don't we stop this episode right here and right now. So, thank you everybody for watching. Come back for the next part if you like. I like this game very much. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. And yeah, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.